Under the Hammer, this is ITV1. Now, stand by your bids. Yup, it's that time of day again. It's two o'clock in the afternoon, and that can only mean one thing. It's everything must go... Under the Hammer. Oh, Jamie! <laughs> Hello and welcome to Everything Must Go. Under the hammer. Today we are at Fellows and Sons Auctioneers here in Birmingham. We're with Anne Beddo and her daughter Eileen to see how much money we can make at auction. The Beddoes family live in Brosley in beautiful Shropshire. They have a six bedroom former bed and breakfast which our avid collectors Alan and Anne have almost completely filled with... Musical instruments. Axemen. Teddies. Jewelry, dolls, china, <laughs> from crocs and pots to coats and chandeliers, they're sort of collecting junkies. It is an addiction. It it, it really is an addiction. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've we've often likened it to an addiction, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. In addition to their magpie tendencies, they also look after four of their ten grandchildren for daughter Eileen. They collect things like. China and dresses and handbags. The clothes I've got, oh dear. There must be a hundred coats. Real furs, fun furs, astrakhans. A little German motorbike. There are evening dresses. Instruments and um, bows and arrows. Accessories, handbags, shoes. We really enjoyed it anyway. Oh yeah, we've yeah. loved it, you know, we've loved collecting it. And, and, uh, and we won't stop. <laughs> So when the house became so full they could hardly move, they turned to us at Everything Must Go to see if we could help. And I want to sell somebody a banjo, a trumpet and a whistle. Are you the lady who might be interested in a canoe? Oh, yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, Elsa. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Great. My husband will okay. have a fit. After you. My husband will have a fit. Come on, so Anne and Alan had a really successful house sale and quite a party. This is what they made. Two thousand four hundred seventy-one pounds! But being the hoarders they are, they still had plenty of bits of pieces left over. So we asked them if they'd like to come to auction to see how much they could make under the hammer. We've come to Birmingham's Jewellery Quarter, a thriving area of the second city and still very much at the heart of the jewellery trade. It is in fact the largest jewellery centre outside of London and draws customers from all around the world. Established in 1876, Fellows & Son are one of the UK's oldest auction houses and specialise in jewellery and antiques. We brought Anne and her daughter Eileen here, leaving husband Alan at home with the kids. They put 11 lots up for auction. Today I suppose we're hoping to make a bit more money. Not quite as much, but um, try and make some money anyway. And hope She's it'll be as enjoyable. Loving the fame, really, aren't you? That's what it is. Ah, <laughs> oh, but will Anne be able to resist that magpie instinct? Um, I've got my eye on a, a handbag, a lucite handbag, and uh, one, one or two pieces of tortoiseshell. Small items that are, will go in my pocket and my husband won't see when I get back. <laughs> Anne's doing the right thing if she's thinking of buying by registering as a bidder. So, while they much. go and have a mooch around, let's see what they've brought here to sell. This, in case you haven't realised it, is an Alice in Wonderland mirror. It's made by the famous British pottery Carlton Ware and it's about 30 years old. It's part of a series called the Alice in Wonderland series and that featured, of course, Alice, the Cheshire Cat, the Mad Hatter and even the Queen of Hearts. But what's good about it is if I, if I flip it over, have a look at the uh, back stamp. Here it says Carlton Ware England, but it doesn't say it's the Alice in Wonderland series. Now here's a, ch uh, a quick opportunity to make a quick buck. If you know what to look for, you can usually pick these up quite cheaply from less knowledgeable sources. Hmm, a bit sneaky. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can double, or even maybe in today, just triple our money. 
If you're not in it for the money, then buy it because you like it. Um, this is one of the uh, harder to find items along with the famous Dormouse egg cups. In terms of price, well, upon reflection, hmm, I think the auctioneers put a fairly conservative estimate on this. I know, just between you and me, that at antique fairs these go for between £180 and £200. I think the estimate in the catalogue is about 40 quid. Can you believe it? Okay, so a great opportunity to buy. It will sell, and I think I'm going to say £90 today. That is my guesstimate. Now here's someone I found with a gadget you might like to get your hands on. This is a black light which it tests glass, uh, fluoresces the glass to tell me that this is uranium oxide content which is known as Vaseline glass. It also shows up any nicks, any chips or anything like that. It's a perfect little tool which is used a lot in America for the Vaseline glass society collectors. So you know what you're looking for? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing, you're asking? I'm actually looking at the curvature in this wood. There's a big dip in it. I don't know if you can see. It's warped. It's a nice top. It's pine. The main carcass is uh, mahogany. It's known as a scrub top table. Now, these are very popular at the moment. However, there are some key words when it comes to auction. Buyer, be, way. You see it in the catalogue. You see it all over the place. Now, Ray and Anne, our Ray and Anne, um, have been told this is worth a lot more than the price I think it's worth. And they're very reluctant to sell it. Come, come with me. Let's flip it up on its side. And if you can have a look here, always inspect a piece of furniture if you get the chance. If you have a look down here, some wood has been added. And straight away, look, we've got some new screws and some old screws. Bit of a warning sign. Next up is this glue, which has been added uh, very recklessly, I should say. And it hasn't, you know, they haven't even bothered to sort of smooth it down. It's a clumsy repair job. The legs are nice, that's a good thing, they're called federal legs, there's a ball in the middle and a ball near the floor, but these extra feet have been added, so it's not all in keeping with the whole piece. So, well, it's not a bad piece, is it? If it was in great nick, we'd be looking at 200, maybe even 250 quid, but it ain't. If somebody was to come along today and they didn't do the checks which I've just talked about with you, then they may pay a lot of money for it. Personally, I think it's not going to go for more than £80 today. I love auctions. It's such fun browsing around and you never actually know what you're going to find. I actually know somebody who might want this. Lot 187, I might put in a bid. Anne has loads of perfume bottles under the hammer, but it's these two that caught my eye. I'm used to seeing uh, top names on Everything must go. And here are another two of them. They're uh, by a French glassmaker called Bacharach, and they truly are one of the finest glassmakers in the world. Uh, the name comes from a, a small French village in which the company was first started back in 1765 by a business-minded bishop. These two items are, in fact, perfume atomizers. Um, Bacharach is perhaps most famous for their perfume bottles, of which these aren't. However, these are still collectible. Um, these puffers are <laughs> they look a bit puffed out, I'm afraid. Um, but it's not as serious as losing a glass stopper and a perfume bottle. They can be replaced fairly easily. In terms of price, I think today at auction for the two, it's one lot, lot number 273, I think we're going to make uh, £100 for the pair. Meanwhile, I'm still looking for my star item. Now, this delightful Guinness lamp by Carlton Ware is the real McCoy. It was designed to sit on a bar in a pub, which is why not many of them survived. This is unfortunately slightly damaged around the top, and uh, it is missing its original lampshade. Now, there are plenty of fakes around, which will be in perfect condition. You'll find that with the fakes that the orange is a really, really bright orange, and the moulding's really crude. But um, this, if it was in perfect condition, would be worth about 300 to 400 pounds. Today, we'll see how it gets on. It should clear at least 100. Now I wonder if Anne's ever used this at home. I'll tell you what, if this isn't sold today, I'll be taking it home myself. I have to say, opinions will probably vary about what the true usage of this large blue bowl actually is. I think, between you and me, it's actually a foot bath. Perfect for that post-auction pampering. <laughs> In terms of design, well, it's kind of got a, a William Morris or arts and craft design. 
It's a, a style known as Flow Blue, which was a creative device, which was first developed by the one and only one-legged Josiah Wedgwood in the 1820s. In terms of date, I can date it because I recognise the pattern. And uh, it's not just because of the glaze. This is late 19th century, or uh, 1880s or 1890s. Now, in good nick, this could make between 150 and 200 pounds. However, if I flip it over, we've got some fairly substantial cracks. It'd be worth even more if it was by a top firm like Spode. Today, I imagine it will sell, but only for 50 pounds. Anne and Eileen, we're at your lovely table, and uh, you've got a paddle, but this is for buyers. What are you doing with one of these? Um, well, I was thinking of actually buying the table back, Wendy, if it didn't go for as much money as I wanted for it. OK, what's your reserve here? Um, I think the reserve is 80 on it. Yeah. But really, I'd like some, somewhere near 200 for it. Now, our Jamie's had a good look at this table, and because the top doesn't match the legs, and it's been sort of quite badly repaired in places, he reckons that uh, you mu you'll only get a good price for this if people don't look closely at it. Okay. So you've got to be realistic here, Anne. Yeah. And you've got to let it go. I'm going to let it go. I'll let it go. Yeah. <laughs> I will let it go. And I can take I, this I, away I, from you. I, I, no, no, I've got something else to bid on. <laughs> oh, heck. Come on. <laughs> I've had a busy old morning looking at all the items Anne has brought to auction. If she shifts them all, she'll make a tidy packet. This chandelier's never had a chance to shine at home, but it might do if Anne doesn't sell today. My estimate, £80. Nice bit of Baccarat, this. Let's say 50 quid. Pretty little fishy with silver bubbles as a stopper. I reckon it could make £90. A sweet little Satsuma style of ours should reach 65 And a collection of 10 perfume bottles. I reckon £70 for this lot. Two pretty perfume bottles with four miniatures. I'd bet on making 65 and finally, Anne's apple-shaped paperweight and round pot, I'd estimate reaching 50 quid. So, join us in a moment to find out just how much Anne actually makes under the hammer. There are some fantastic savings at Boots this Christmas, like our amazing offer on fine fragrances. With up to a third off a great range of well-known brands, it's a great time to treat someone special to their favourite fragrance. Great gift ideas, great offers, now available at Boots. No prescription for me. She's the one, the only remedy. When a nagging cough, runny nose, and an aching head stop you sleeping, nurse it better with Niners. Niners. Now, 24 hour care for colds and flu comes in one handy pack. New day and night nurse capsules. Hey, don't forget your wow camera offer this Christmas only at your local Click Photo Point or Max Spielman Photo Store. Capture your festive family moments with this easy, fun to use camera. A 24 shot color film, free processing, and only $5.99. Only available from your local Click Photo Point and Max Spielman. Or order direct now on 0870 013 1000. up in there, we'll be all stretched and out of shape. If I can just reach the new comfort form, that'll help save us from going saggy. <laughs> just the solution I was looking for. Ooh. Shaken, not stretched. Ooh. Not stretched, not stretched. Huh? New comfort form conditioner helps keep clothes in great shape. Subtle, delicate, refined. Les Eaux Parfumées. New fragrances created for your home by Airwick. Airwick. Fragrances that change your world. Before you color your hair, stop and think. What if you could protect your hair when you color? You can, with Excellence Cream from L'Oreal. With lots of ceramide protein conditioner for increased protection, Excellence wraps every strand in rich insulating cream. And because it's a cream, it doesn't drip. And grays? <laughs> what grays? Get great color and protect your hair. Does your hair color do all this? Excellence Cream from L'Oreal. It colors and protects. Because you're worth it. 
Now you can transform your bath into a luxury water jet spa for less. The Babyliss Bath Spa Experience. Now for a lot less. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. one of you will have to stay. Mm, yeah. Mm. Is there a third? I'm brainy girls. Just want to have fun. <laughs> I declare this Extreme Burger the winner. Get the new Flame Grilled Extreme Bacon and Swiss Cheese Whopper at Burger King now. Woohoo! Carry me home! Go! Hey, our kid. How did it go at the dentist's? Not bad, so I mean, I've got two brand new teeth, haven't I? Hey, you're not from round here, are you? You soft southern. Don't hurt us. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Oh, you teeth pack it in! Oh, oh. 2D TV, Wednesday, 10.30. Oh. The hammer's about to start coming down here at Fellows and Sons in Birmingham. And some prospective bidders are grabbing their last chance to cast their eye over the lots. I found a quiet corner to catch up with senior partner Stephen Whitaker, who's today's auctioneer. Buying jewellery at auction is a very good way to buy it because we provide quite a lot of jewellery for the trade then to sell in their own shops. So if you know what you're looking for and you can come to auction and have a good look at what's in the catalogue, take the advice of the members of staff who we have, who are diamond graders and gemologists, who will give you the advice about what is a good buy and what isn't a buy, uh, necessarily a good buy, then it's a good way to buy it. But anyway, buying at auction should be fun. It shouldn't just be a question of saving money. But if I buy a ring for, say, £100, what is its value? Well, providing you haven't gone extravagantly outside the estimates, that is what we would call perhaps a trade estimate. So that's probably going to reappear in somebody's shop at perhaps £250, £300. So you're always getting surprises? I think if this life wasn't exciting and full of surprises, you wouldn't do the auction business. There's always something unusual. There'll be something in unusual in today's sale that afterwards the values will be going... Why did that make so much money? And it may be nothing to do with the item. It may be more to do with the people who were in the room on the day who really wanted it. Or maybe somebody's, um, some chap was sitting there and his wife was digging him in the ribs and saying, if you don't bring that home, don't bother coming home. So do you, would you say you're an adrenaline junkie? Certainly, auctions are fun. And if they weren't fun, we wouldn't be doing it. There's a lot of hard work that the staff have done to get the sale ready today, but there is the reward when they see something that they've looked after, they've taken out of somebody's house, they've catalogued it, they've photographed it, and when it does well, I'm sure they get the satisfaction of thinking, Mrs. Smith, or whatever her name is, would you please, that's made a good sum of money. So let's hope this adrenaline junkie can make some hard cash for Anne today. Here we go. Always a tense time. Lot 43. Blue and white transfer bowl, lot 43. 40 pounds we have, this lot of 40, 42, 45, 48. At 48 pounds only now, 50 is standing on my right at 50. Away on my right here at 50 pounds, at 50 pounds. It'll go then at 50, if you're sure and done with it at 50 pounds, it's selling at 50 pounds then. Number 28. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. yeah. Lot 97. And here's my star pounds, item. This sort of 40, 42, 42 pounds only at 42 pounds only. At 42 pounds now, 45, I'm bid here on my left at 45. 48, 50, 5, 60, 60 pounds. In front here on my left at 60 pounds and it will sell. For 19. If it wasn't damaged, it would have gone for a lot more. Lot 115A, the Carlton Ware mirror. Now this should be interesting. At 50 pounds I have this on Very 50, nice 50, piece 50, this. 60, 5, 70, Good at 70 pounds. At 70 pounds only, 75. Oh, come on, it's 80. worth more than on that. On the commissions here at 80. It's on the commission bid at 80 pounds. At 80 pounds then, it'll sell at 80 pounds if you're sure and done at 80 pounds and it'll go. Oh my God, I can't believe that. Really? <laughs> 80 pounds, yeah. Unbelievable. I bet that person's just walked into Wonderland Lot with that. One, two, one. 80 pounds, pounds I said 90 quid. 10, 12, that Alice Colton went there. I know you'll pay pounds, around about twice that at an antiques fair. Incredible. The chandelier, 166A. There's 80 pounds we have for this on a date. 85, 90, 95, 100. Now, my estimate was 80 pounds for the uh, chandelier, but Anne insisted on a reserve price of 130. If it doesn't reach her reserve, we won't sell it. You sure done at 120. And it didn't Lot sell. 273. 50 pounds, I'd be if this on a 50, 55, 55 pounds only, 60, 65 in front at 65, at 65, 70 onto the phones. Telephone bid, 75 now in front. At 75 pounds here in front at 75. At 75 pounds, seated here in front at 75 pounds, and it will sell. Good. 
That's quite respectable, isn't it? Number seven, thank you, sir. 273A. It's two pieces this time. Twenty pounds for a bid for this lot. Twenty. Very collectible glass backer. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight pounds thirty. At thirty pounds with a commission bid, then at thirty pounds. At thirty pounds only. At thirty pounds, it'll go. Well, Anne's doing rather well, I'd say. She's selling steadily. Fine. Lot two seventy three B. The fish perfume bottle. There's sixty pounds I have for this. Lot. Very nice piece. This. Don't forget, I said a ninety pound estimate on this. Excellent. With a commission now at ninety five. At ninety five pounds. Come on, a bit more. At one hundred pounds, have a telephone bid at one hundred pounds. It'll sell at one hundred. You're all out at one hundred pounds then. Very good, we got a ton for that. Excellent. 274 is your next one. 50 pounds on bib, this sort of 50. 55. My estimate is 65 pounds, pounds don't forget. Pounds only. At 55 pounds, all done with it now, 55. Very sweet little piece. Over here on my left at 60 pounds in the room. At 60 pounds, it'll sell at 60 pounds. If you're sure and done at 60 and it'll go. Ah, it's gone for a five less than I hoped. Yeah. Lot 274A, a collection of scent bottles this time. There's 50 pounds a bit for this on 50, 55, 60. Very uh, collectible scent bottles. 65 pounds only at 65, 70 with a lady down there at 70. 75. In front now at 75. At 75 pounds, it's in front here at 75 pounds, and they'll sell at 75 if you're sure and done. <laughs> no way, that's a five or more than I hoped for. <laughs> Lot 274B. There's 40 pounds I have for this on a 40, 42, 45, 48, at 48 pounds only at 48, at 48 pounds only at 48 pounds, 50 onto the phone then at 50. My the estimate was 65 on these. You're all out there at 50 pounds, it's for the telephone at 50. If Come on, a few more quid. Pounds and they'll sell. Telephone bidder at 50 pounds. Great, you're the one gone. Someone's the winner today. Lot 274C <laughs> for Charlie, here we go. There's 20 pounds on bib for this on a 20, 22, 25, 28, 30. Now, paperweights are very collectible all over the world. 40, 42, 45, 48, 50. Look at her just holding her hand up there. She's been doing that all day. With the commissions at 55. At 55 pounds, it'll go at 55 if you're shown down at 55 and it will sell. We're happy. Good old car boot. Yeah. Really? <laughs> really? No, yeah. definitely not. Now, this will be interesting. My estimate was £80, pounds, but if the bidders haven't looked properly, it could make loads pounds. more. 80 is standing right at the back of the room now at £80. Pounds. It's gone. It's £80. Pounds. Yeah. So the back of the room at £80. It'll sell then at £80 pounds if you're sure and done. I thought so. <gasps> My husband's going to kill me. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Goodbye. How do you feel? I'm all right. You're OK? Nine. Yeah, fine. Phew. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> So buying at auction is really exciting, but after the sale there are some practicalities to consider. Payment is usually expected on the day and there will be around 15% added to your hammer price. This is the auctioneer's commission, it's how they make their money. On top of this, there is also likely to be a further 17.5% VAT, sorry. So check all the charges before the sale as it could make a difference to when you stop bidding. Now, having paid for your goods, most auction houses will expect you to take your items away on the day of the sale. Some sales rooms will pack your breakables for you, but not all of them do this, so it could be a good idea to check before you go, or take some cardboard boxes and bubble wrap with you. Well, the auction's over. Anne and Eileen, what a day! Yeah, great. It was good, was yes, it? Really good. Jamie, how did the items do individually? Well, it's not only been a good day for them; it's been a very good day for me. <laughs> <laughs> I focused on four items, of course. <gasps> um, just touching on the flow blue foot bath. I said fifty notes. Remember that? You did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the hammer price was what? Fifty pounds. It was great memory. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Next up was the the lovely Carlton Ware Alice in Wonderland mirror. Yeah. Now my estimate was ninety notes on that, and it actually went for eighty. It so did. a tenner out. You win some, you lose some. Not far. And the uh, the third out of the four items was the mahogany dining room table with the uh, scrub top. Very yeah. nice, very functional antique. That eighty pounds was my estimate, and guess what? It came in at eighty quid as well. Fantastic. <laughs> But I wasn't quite as accurate with the Baccarat perfume atomizers. They only made 75 quid and that was, uh, what, £25 under what I'd said? So we've had a fantastic day. <laughs> we've yeah, had a great, great day. I should add that out of all those four items, I was only 35 quid off the mark. Oh.
Brilliant. Now, the sadness is that you didn't sell the chandelier, but you're not no. too upset about it, are you? No, we're gonna... we'll rehang it in the dining room. It's never been hung, so it'll get rehung there. You're gonna actually use it? Yes. Yeah. Eileen, are you proud of your mum today? Yeah, very, yeah. She's done well. She's done so, extremely well. I'll make well. sure she hangs her chandelier. Today we made £655. Oh. At the sale, we made £2,471, which makes a grand total of £3,126. Let's see how it all happened. So, first up under the hammer was Alan and Anne's Flow Blue Foot Bath, which my estimate of £50. Not quite reflecting its true value, but the delightful Alice Mirror made £80. No takers then for the brass and crystal chandelier. But the Baccarat perfume atomizer sold for £75. The delightful perfume bottle and bowl raised 30 quid. The little fish, Lalique style perfume bottle, made £100. Wow! That Satsuma vase, £60. Ten assorted perfume bottles went for £75. My two pretty perfume bottles with four lovely miniatures went for 50 an apple paperweight and spherical pot got £55. Cool. And that scrub top table with mahogany legs and dodgy glue went for my estimated price of £80. And to round off a really great auction, my star item, the Carlton Ware Penguin Lamp, went under the hammer for £60. But if we add the £655 we made at auction, to the £2,471 we raised at Anne and Alan's house sale. We get a grand total of £3,126. Phew, that was a lot of action and a lot of money made. So why not join us again tomorrow when we see what happens to Ray and Jill Askew's treasures as they go under the hammer. So from all of us here in Birmingham, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. There'll be more bargain hunting at the same time, 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. What next on ITV1, Moira and Minnie are thrown into the spotlight on Shortland Street.